Hello and welcome to What is this accent? <laughs> oh, a musical review we of Anastasia's. Oh my god, what was that delivery? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to try it? Hello and welcome to our musical review of Anastasia. 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 <laughs> Anastasia. <laughs> Googaloosh. Did you see the original 97 musical when it, like, did you see it in theaters? Did you no. see it on a tape later? I, didn't. I saw it on a tape later. I did not see it in theaters. I was walking around a, like, 99 cent type store, like a dollar store type thing. Yeah. And they had a ton of Anastasia. I, th I want to say there were, like, Burger King toys because they had the yeah. Burger King toy trains. And I was like, I don't know what, the, I, and I'm surprised, obsessed with trains. And I looked at them and I was like, I don't know what this is. I had no idea. And I'd seen like random commercials for Anastasia, but I didn't know what it was. And I was like, there's a train. That's all I knew. There was mm -hmm. a train and there was a, a, a girl in a, in a rag. So then I saw the movie a few years later. It was, it was several years after it originally came out. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's, that's, that's fun. And I never really got obsessed with it until like I got more and more interested in it as it went as time went on and we started talking yeah. about like the Romanoff family. Don Bluth movies were not something my family owned. Disney movies we owned, Don Bluth movies we borrowed from the library. Mm -hmm. My mom is a bit of an animation snob. <laughs> and I've never really like looked into this in depth. Don't know why, but she is. We didn't buy Don Bluth movies. They were they were fine to rent from the library, but like we didn't buy them. Uh, but I did see Anastasia more than just about any other Don Bluth movie, and it is, like, hands down I my think favorite same. of his films. Yeah. I was much more familiar with it, like, when it came out. and I didn't see it in theaters, but I definitely watched it a lot when it first hit the public consciousness, I guess is the best way to yeah. put that. I kind of lumped it together with, like, Prince of Egypt as, like, the two movies I liked that were animated that weren't Disney. Weren't Disney, yeah. I was a little history dork at this point. So this movie came out in 97, so, like, 98, 99 is really when I would have been experiencing it. And at that point, my life goal was to be an archaeologist. Yeah. So, so history-based movies were, like, 100% up my alley. And it's much more... It feels much more historically based than a lot of, like, Disney animated films of the time do. And then everybody started getting all jazzed about the stage musical coming. And I remember everybody sharing it on Facebook with, they're gonna make a stage musical, they're gonna well, make a see, stage musical. Well, see, my thing was, like, this makes the most sense out of a lot of these movies and, Dis mm -hmm. and, and, and animated movies being adapted to the stage. Children's they, movies, They yeah. announced Frozen and everyone was, like, surprised, nobody's surprised. Yeah. But, like, they... This one has a, such a big stage presence within the film itself. It made sense to adapt that years before. Yeah. So I, I, why it took so long, Lord only knows. I think that it... it I'm they, glad they waited because it did really well. I was yeah. afraid if they'd done it earlier, it might have been rushed. Yeah, and then not, not done so hot. So the stage musical had its out-of-town tryouts in 2016. In Hartford, Connecticut. And we were doing Carrie at the time. And the two leads, Christy Altamar and Derek Klenna, were in the 2012 off-Broadway revival of Carrie. So we were like, yo, congratulations. Our opening's on the same weekend as your opening. And now we're all best friends. I'm just kidding. We're not best That's, friends. That is an exaggeration. That is, that is a big, big old exaggeration. But everyone knows who we are because we're, we're Eric and Katie, and who wouldn't want to know us? So it had us out of town tryouts, and it was great, and they transferred it to Broadway, and it was great, and then it got no, like, good nominations. We'll get into that. One of the big things that changed from Hartford to Broadway was the blue dress that she walks out in the movie, and it didn't appear in Hartford, and everyone was like, uh, Where's what? the dress? Uh, what? 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 And then it was in New York, and it was gorgeous so so let's talk about the plot so the plot has changed significantly from yes. what the original animated movie was primarily your the biggest change is your villain has changed the mm -hmm. animated film the villain is rasputin and he's very much a supernatural being he's dead he's in hell he randomly falls apart he has magic and when they did the stage adaptation, they went, hmm, I don't think that's going to translate. Instead, they shifted it to the Communist Party does not want a symbol for the Russian people to rally around. So they task an officer with taking her out. 
Um, and he's super conflicted, and he has human emotions and character development and depth, which is really, really nice, because you don't get that in all of your villains, especially in a in something based on a children's material. One of the other reasons is that the book writer was looking at the time period that everything was taking place, and he goes, Rasputin was well dead by, by dead. this point. Very and very no, dead. we're not doing that. It also removed Bartok. I was going to say, what about Hank Azaria? Talk yeah, well, the equation. but well, a tiny animated irritating. bat was not going to translate to the stage. Also, he was irritating the entire movie because comedy. The only thing that bothered me was Rasputin had such an excellent song. Now they did recycle the tune into, like the melody into the stage show, but his song was so good. Mm -hmm. Also, it's like that character is a beautiful mash of two of my favorite voices because it's Christopher Lloyd for the speaking and Jim Cummings for the singing. The musical does a split in the middle so the first half of the show is in russia and the second half of the show is in paris which makes sense the way you know you do a stage musical you do. um i think that the character developments of each of the characters the ones that are from the movie as well as the additional ones mm -hmm. that are added how were it's really only done. one main character added, and Which, it's Gleb. And then everybody else was present now, in the original film. Lily was not her name in the movie. They changed her. Sophie. Her name was Sophie, Sophie in that's the film. It, yes. Because I was like, I don't think it was her Lily. name was Sophie in the film, but she was voiced by Bernadette Peters. Mm -hmm. She was in the film. Her ch character was changed, but the like, the role she filled was exactly the same. Yeah. They just changed. I think probably that was going to be another one of those just more historically sourced yeah. moments. You have your trio that you follow. Also, we lost Anastasia's dog. We Puka. did. We did lose we did Puka. Lose Puka. You get appearances from the royal family, and then you have, of course, her grandmother and <laughs> Lily, who was Sophie uh, in the animated film. <laughs> I hate you. Grandmama. Um, also, my favorite line from the movie was cut for this no film. No good way for that to go. In. Oh, I would have walked on stage and done it and then walked off and that would have been my paycheck for the week. Christy should just continue to play, like, she should just do it forever. She's just Anastasia forever. I'm 95. I'm the Princess Anastasia. I can do it. Like, let's just keep going. And she got engaged recently. Yes. Let's talk about the music. So the songs that are pulled from the movie are Journey to the Past. Uh, learn to do it. Learn to do it. Once upon a December. Once upon a December. Uh, Rumor in St. Petersburg. Petersburg and the Paris. Perry holds the key. Perry holds the key to your heart. Now the lyrics for most of these songs are changed around. The placement is also play, uh, moved around a little bit. Journey of the Past is at the end of Act One instead of the beginning of the show, and like they've they've reconfigured the entire thing to make it work for the, better for the stage. But when you watch it, they feel very natural in their places. Yeah. They don't feel like, wow, that was an awkward move. Like, yeah. like Let It Go and Frozen was an awkward move. Yeah. It, it, there was nothing else to end Act 1 with. No, which, I mean, I know why they did it. It yeah. just kind of felt like, oh, where is it? So now when we go back and watch the animated movie, we're kind of like, oh, this is weird. Oh, this is really early. Then there are some new songs. Do you have a favorite new song? In My Dreams. Mm, yeah which is her I want because journey to the past was originally her I want in the film version so then obviously when they shuffled it to the end of act one they needed a new I want song for yeah. her and in my dreams is just such a beautiful beautiful song surprise I'm going to pick my Petersburg because it's another one of the few upbeat songs that we have in the show mm -hmm. the show's music is it's not all upbeat and it's not all somber but it leans more in the serious serious direction yeah. which is weird for me but because of the material and like the performers they keep it moving which is nice yeah because if this was to sleep. <laughs> if this was any other show i'd probably be like i don't know if i can do this anymore guys like well i like it because you know there's a couple of different ways to take something that was originally built for children and then put it on a stage where it really does need to appeal to an adult audience mm. and this took it in the this is a serious and dramatic story because yeah. then there's because there's the like the route that Frozen took which was like or Shrek would take when the like let's sneak more adult humor into it yeah. and then there's something like Spongebob that's just like we're going to be pure child crap yeah. and you're gonna deal with it if you're an adult and then there's this or I'd say probably like Beauty and the Beast kind of falls into this category yeah. where it's the yeah. like this is a 
yes, it was originally marketed toward children, but it is still a story that stands on its own and a story that can have respect in and of itself for being a serious piece. The costumes were, they, they took pieces of cardboard and they said, let's put all of that on people. And they said, boom, this is costume design. Or that's what the Tony committee apparently thought. I am still extraordinarily bitter that they did not get a nomination or sh what they should have had, which was a win for costume design. They were literally the best I have seen in a show in quite some time. They are uh. gorgeous. They are absolutely stunning. There were a few shows that we saw during the time that we saw Anastasia that I was like, some of these costumes are also very good. Hello Dollies were pretty good. Um, I enjoyed those. Uh, we recently saw Kinky Boots and those costumes, some of them, oh my gosh, that was great. Yeah. Some of those costumes were amazing. And some of them were very quiet costumes so that the big costumes could pop. That's yes. what I mean by some of them. But with Anastasia, you had a good Everyone. balance of everything because you had to see the, the poorness of Russia during this time. And then you saw the transition as you went to Paris where all the colors started to really pop and then all the dresses came out all the, it was just, it was unbelievable. The costumes have a very good use of textures. Yes. And um, so so that they really like the Paris costumes are just sequins and glitter and all of these really fantastic fabrics that give it a lot of life in a, in some, in a way that the animated film couldn't in that, you know, you could have alternating fabric types that give yeah. it a really like a nice play with the lighting. Uh, it's the same costume designer that came from Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder, which also has excellent costumes. Yes. The blue one is the best dress to come out of it. I think there's that's that's the one that has, for me, the most detail. And like she walks out and there's just the light picks it up and it's like, oh my god, this is great. Personally, I'm in love with the the dresses that the sisters wear. Yeah, the 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 attention to detail with the R Russian. Culture. culture, yeah. It was like Russian clothing history. That's not what I was Russian trying to say. There's a good attention to detail paid to the Russian culture throughout the concept of the show. Yeah. And that's really well reflected within the costumes that are seen on the stage. The scenic design is one of the best uses I've seen of projection work. That was another thing, is that when you do projection work, a lot of shows are reliant upon it and it's irritating. This one, especially when you think about Once Upon a December with the ghost sequence, like that was immediately like you're gonna do projection yeah. mapping and, and uh, that's gonna be fine because that's, go that's going yes. to be the way it works for the show. But they also blended it with people mm -hmm. dancing, which is which is great. It's the same projection designer from Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. There's quite a few people from the production that came from Gentleman's Guide. And Gentleman's Guide does some really excellent thing with their rear projection as well. Um, with the best projection moment in Anastasia being the train sequence in that they have oh, so good, guys. the train movement with the background movement so you get a sense of motion mm. that is I've never seen used as effectively in any other stage adaptation I don't think it, of anything. It's, yeah. um, and it's something that you could only do with technology. The train car moving, like the older shows might have had that, but having it synced with the background's yeah. movement so that it feels very smooth and very fluid while being something that the second you start thinking about it from a technical standpoint, you're like, hold on a second. Yeah. How much time went into Timing all of out. this? Yeah. And you know, then you have the people on the train being choreographed to move correctly. And like, there's so many different things that have to happen. And they do this eight shows a week. Yeah. Like, this is not, like, one and done. Like, you have to keep that level of consistency all the way across the board. Yeah. I think the set pieces were also nice, the way they blended it. They, they did a good job with, there's a lot of arches mm -hmm. in the set design, and then some pieces will come out, they'll go back, they'll turn, they'll come back out. Yeah. Um, so you'll they make good use of what physical set pieces they have as yeah. well. Anastasia is now on tour. Uh, which is its first on national tour, tour in Germany. I'm just kidding. It's not on no, tour. No, it's Germany. on tour in the U.S. Uh, which is its first national tour. Which they just had their 100th performance mm -hmm. of the national tour. They're they're Recent. going right through them. Uh, they seem to be doing really really well. I'd be interested this to is see a show how. That would tour well. Yeah, because I was going to say like the set pieces are large arches, which are easy to move in because they're not as heavy as like a flat set piece would be. 
um, with the only big moving piece being the train car, with projection being a thing that are move that is moving forward and becoming more prevalent in theater, it really does make traveling shows that much more feasible because you can have these really stellar backdrops yeah. that don't require the same maintenance as a traveling piece that other things would like correct you get the projections up and running you make sure they're focused you make sure they're distance right but like they don't have to be repainted yeah they don't require the same upkeep that another show like a like a painted backdrop would or and then you think about stuff like phantom takes like you know i think 14 or 15 trucks wicked wicked also takes 14 trucks to get across you have that, so much that dragon yeah, the dragon, the chandelier. Yeah, like you have all you have a lot of stuff that you have to be able to transport, and then re see, and that's why I'm like, I, the amount of time it takes to put these. And I don't know they have a system, but like, and then they're only God. in a city for a, like a week. Uh, for some of the, for some some of the bookings, yeah. Yeah, Wicked usually is uh, from the at the beginning. I'm not sure what it is mm -hmm. now because I haven't really looked at the tour stuff. At the beginning, it was booked for like six weeks a piece yeah. because they knew people wanted to see the show. Yeah. And then Phantom still comes back for a, usually a, a two-week run in some of these cities. Yeah. Because everyone's like, Phantom. Whereas something like Dear Evan Hansen is able to do a much shorter stop because it's got far less set dressings. And they can bump up prices. Uh, anyway, so. Hamilton. If you ever want a look backstage at Anastasia, Christy did a series of vlogs called Royal Misfits for BroadwayWorld.com. Royal Misfits. She has gone on to be very, I don't know if she was doing it before, but I know since then she's been super active on Instagram and she live streams from the show just about every night. Mm -hmm. uh, she live streams, there's a, there's a section in act two where she's off stage for about 10 to 15 minutes. And because she's really, once she goes on stage in Act One, she doesn't come off. Yeah. She is out there the entirety of Act One. Uh, and so she will live stream from her dressing room during Act Two. And you can hear that they're playing Land of Yesterday and Countess and the Common Man. So you can really place it if you're watching the show, like when she's live. Uh, she has, there's the little girl who plays, uh, currently Delilah, plays little Anastasia and little Alexi. So they always have her and her standby, and then Amy, who's the child guardian for the show. Child um, guardian. Other people will come in when Max was playing Gleb. He was in all the time. Um, other people, Cody Simpson, who's currently playing Demetri, has popped in a couple of times. Anytime there's a, a standby or understudy on for Demetri, he usually will pop in, whether it's um, Kyle or any of the other guys. I've seen a couple of different guys pop, pop in. Um, Tally popped in the one day because he was on for Gleb. Lyrica is one of the dancers. She's the Lyrica's she's like the head wonderful. ballet dancer for the show, and she's one of the prettiest people to ever exist. I don't know how she's so gorgeous. Um, and they all and also Christy has a ton of candy in her dressing room, so everybody comes in for snacks because yeah. she will have like dip, dip, as she calls it, um, and candy out and available. So she's just got this very like she's just got a very happy personality that sort of mm -hmm. draws everybody in yeah um and she shares that daily on instagram and that's super magical so back to the show sorry so that was a nothing to do huge with tangent it does have to do with the show yeah. though so can i tell you a funny story about when i saw it so it was in the learn to do it number which is one of the songs that came over from the animated film and it's one of the ones that kids will quickly recognize is from the animated film. And it's very much a comedy number and they're trying to teach her how to be a princess. And she's just not doing very well. And then they're dancing and then the dancing is super awkward. And there was this moment where they, they do, and I don't remember exactly which moment in the song it was, but there um, was a- They were starting to, they were like, okay, now it's time to actually learn to dance. So- So we were headed- imagery. Yeah. So they were headed into the dance sequence and there's like a funny moment and then they pause and give the audience time to laugh and then they go back into it. So the audience laughs. And as everyone is quieting down and the number is about to restart, a child in the back starts to giggle. And it was a very genuine giggle. And it was not a, it was not somebody trying to draw attention to themselves. And it was not somebody doing it to upset the show. It was just a child who just got the joke and giggled. And it was this perfect, like, film quality child giggle. And John Bolton, who played Vlad, lost it. He was doubled over trying to breathe on the stage just and every time he'd like straighten up and start to pull it back together he just 
fell apart again to the point that Christy who plays Anastasia and Derek who plays Dimitri like turned and were like <laughs> you hate me. he's like doubled over and can't breathe on the stage which makes the audience laugh which makes him laugh and the whole thing just like the whole show stopped for like two minutes while we all we John pulled himself back together and eventually he did and he kind of looked at them and like looked at the conductor and was like okay we're good to go and they like went off through the rest of the number but it was very much that moment of like this is live theater yeah. this is why live theater is magical and b particularly because it's the only time I've seen an interruption of a show that was not someone doing it to be a jerk. Yeah. Like I've seen instant either either in person or on film where somebody has done something because they want to throw the show off and because they want yeah, to like just, be why? rude, which of course is then met with more rudeness. This was just a genuine child laughter at a funny moment and it broke an actor. <laughs> Anastasia, it was a wonderful show experience and we highly recommend going to see it. Yes. Uh, I would definitely say in New York. You, the, the difference being like a show on tour is going to be great, but it's not going to be the same atmosphere mm -hmm. as a show in New York. It's, you know, I mentioned this a little bit with Wicked where I can't go see Wicked on tour anymore because they, it just feel a complete disconnect from everyone. Yeah. And seeing it now twice in new york both times with lottery it's just it's such a, a, a jaw-dropping experience and yeah. it's just so jarring so i think and i think it's the same thing I, i'm very hesitant about seeing something on tour because i don't know what the experience is going to be like i think anastasia based on the videos we've seen based on the mm -hmm. cast interviews i'm like oh okay this will be good this yeah. is going to be fine um but yeah if you're in new york definitely come check it out that is a big recommendation from us. It's, it's wonderful. It's somewhere over there. It's like two streets over. Well, because we can see the Frozen mm -hmm. marquee from here, and it's across the street from Frozen. So this it's is what there. we can see from Orlando. Yes. Does it belong to you? Me? Yes. yes. Am I viewer. To you are a viewer. You the viewer. You the viewer. Do you like this seat? No. Oh, good. <laughs> Will you like this video? Yeah. Very good. <laughs> what accent is that? I've told you I'm from Planet Googaloosh. Googaloosh. <laughs> well, our call of greeting is Googly 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 Go. Do the video now. We are doing the video. It is. It is the taping. By the taping, can we I mean, do there something no related video. to the video, please? Sure, we can talk to the viewer. Hello, viewer. <laughs> one viewer. We only <laughs> just one. <laughs> Listen, we need to make everyone feel special. That's not the way to do it. Maybe <laughs> want them to like actually ever watch the video again. Um, Lele. And <laughs> stop it. And then you have an ensemble that fills. Ensemble. So many other roles. Lele. And the grandmother. Just stop. That's super Engaged. fun. That means you will be married soon. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Vocabulary. Yes. 